Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Don't differ with Allah and His Messenger. And don't argue with the Quran. And argue with the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how do we argue with the Quran and how do we argue with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We argue by differing and trying to rationalize it, saying, I know. I'm going against the Sunnah, or I know I'm doing this thing which is haram, but, but, trying to justify what we're doing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our sins. As the Prophet wasallam said that we all have sins, but the best of those who sin is those who make tawbah, who repent to Allah with an open heart, coming back to Him, striving to be away from that sin, being determined to remove themselves from that environment of sinfulness. And may Allah bless us with Tawbah and Nusuha. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, Wa man yushakik al Rasoola min ba'di ma tabayna lahu huda, wa yatabiyu, wa yatabiyu ghayra sabil al Mu'mineen. Nuwallihi ma tawalla wa nuslihi jahannam wa saat masira. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem Whoever differs with the messenger after it has been made clear after guidance has been made clear to him and follows a path other than the believers then he will be attributed to those who he followed and be burned in Jahannam in the hellfire and what a wicked or an evil destination and that's a general meaning or general translation of the ayah and I advise myself and others to go back to some of the translations to get some of the wording exact to be a bit more precise. But the general meaning is, as was mentioned and very clear, that by differing with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so arguing with his Sunnah, is only gonna get you the destination of the hellfire. And this is why we say we strive to be from Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. It's not just a group or a sect or something. But this is the Sabila Najah, Sabila Mu'mineen. It's a way of success. And it's the path of the believers. And as the Salaf, or as the Ulama, they state, Sabila Mu'mineen, Huma Sahaba. The path of the believers is the Sahaba. We're ordered to follow their creed. Follow their madhab and, minh and minhaj <coughs> and methodology. Radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in. And this following of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following of the sabil al mu'mineen is comprised of three components. As Shaykh Abdus Salam al Suhaimi. Or one of our mashaykh stated, I can't recall exactly if it was Sheikh Abdul Salam Suhaimi or Sheikhna, Sheikh Saeed, have the Allah Ta'ala. He said, Ittiba, following, is a, comprised of three components. The first is Ittisam bi kitab wa sunnah. So the first component is adhering to the Quran and the sunnah. And the second component of following is Adam Tafarraq wa is avoiding 
not dividing and not being into sects and groups. And the third component of really following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ittiba muqayyid bi fahm salam that the following of the Sunnah is restricted or specified by the way of the Salaf of this Ummah meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and the Tabi'een rahimahum Allah wa itba'a Tabi'een rahimahum Allah that's the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen and that's what it means to follow the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen and may Allah bless us with tawfiq and bless us with ikhlas, with sunnah, with sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.